In Mexico City, we search for the very best tacos. We begin with a visit with A.D. Gonzalez to learn how to make beef birria tacos. These are flavored with three different types of chilies. Then we demonstrate how to make a fresh tomatillo and serrano chili salsa. And we finish up with one of our favorites, an ancho spiced pork and potato taco. Please stay tuned. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clap. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad for all your kitchen adventures. Tacos are ubiquitous to Mexico, but revered here in the capital, where street vendors sell endless varieties from dawn well into dark. Ruben Orozco has worked as a butcher since he was eight. For 16 years, he's run Tacos Rubens parked on the sidewalk across from a gas station. There's a soccer match playing on a television hanging from the rafters of his canopy, and a dozen people lined up waiting. His family works in unison to produce taco suadero, citrus marinated beef cooked with tripe and chorizo fat on a sombrero-shaped comal. The meat is finally chopped on a well-grooved cutting board and gets slid onto double-layered tortillas along with onions, cilantro, and lime, and a choice of four salsas. All of it, just a few pesos a piece. ¿Puedes querer que me picó la salsa? In our search for Mexico City's best tacos, we learned many lessons. The balance of flavors and textures, the interplay of fire and smoke, and the role of dried chilies, such as in the beef barrier recipe taught to us by home cook, A.D. Gonzalez. Entonces, vamos a poner la carne. Por ejemplo, mira, este es todo, este es un gordito, que nada más le da sabor a la carne. Sí, este es el más lento. Ok. Estamos haciendo nuestros chiles. El ajo, laurel, un pedacito de canela, cebolla. La consistencia debe de quedar así. Y este aire, ¿cómo se cocina? En... No se asa, ¿no? Este va... Mira, esto se hace para que quede sellada la tapa. Y esto se mete al horno. Tres horas, tres horas y media, a 180 grados, sin destapar. If you go to Mexico City, a street food's fabulous. Obviously, lots of tacos. This is beef birria taco. We actually went to Adi Gonzalez's home, and she taught us this recipe which has a lot of lessons and techniques which you can use for lots of taco and other recipes. So we're gonna start with chilies. Up until 10 years ago, I really thought of chilies mostly as heat level. Uh, but if you're Mexico, that's not how they think about chilies. They think about flavor. Guajillos are particularly fruity. I love these, they're not too hot. Ancho chilies, of course, has a ton of flavor. Chipotle chilies. So you come up with a mix of chilies. Many of them are chilies you probably can't get here 
these are three you can get here and that's why we've chosen them. So when you're using chilies in cooking, they're there, as I said, for, for flavor and contrasting flavors and depth of flavor. It's really not so much about heat. So uh, we've taken those chilies and we've seeded them. Uh, and now we're gonna toast them in a skillet. Which really will help to bring out their flavor. Uh, and then a few crushed and peeled garlic cloves as well. So this will take just a few minutes uh, as they start to toast on the outside. You don't want to overdo it so they're burned, but you definitely want to get them toasted and that's gonna enhance the flavor of the chili. We'll let them cool and then we'll tear them up and use them as sort of a basis for a sauce. So the chilies are toasted as the garlic is cooked as well. So we're gonna take the chilies and just tear them up into pieces. And we're gonna make essentially a, a chili sauce or puree with some spices and water. And there are plenty of places online to get them. A few bay leaves, some spices, uh, ground cumin goes in, of course. Cumin's used a lot of Mexican cooking, some thyme, allspice. Uh, very often uh, warm spices are used. Oregano, salt. And now we have two cups of water hot water. Make sure the top is on firmly because you don't, you don't want to get a chilly facial. So we'll start slow. That has a ton of flavor. You know, in Mexico, they very often cook their meat ahead of time without seasoning. Then the seasoning and the meat go together once the meat is cooked. Uh, it's very often done in a pressure cooker because it's quick, uh, but you can do that as we did here in a Dutch oven for about three hours, uh, of course, in the oven. We use beef and onions together as well. Again, you can do this ahead of time. For the meat, we use four pounds of short ribs cut into one to one and a half inch chunks, half a white onion cut up, two cups of water into a Dutch oven. That goes into an oven 350 for about three hours. So we're going to uh, shred this. And I'm also gonna take the liquid that was left from cooking the meat and the onions. We've defatted it, uh, skimmed it off. And now I'm just gonna increase the heat. We wanna reduce this down to, I guess, about half a cup or so. So now we have the defatted cooking liquid. Uh, it's been reduced down to about half a cup or so. We have the um, chili sauce, which we'll add. And now we'll add uh, the beef, which has been shredded. So we're gonna cook this over medium heat uh, until you start to hear a little bit of a sizzle at the bottom of the pot. It should take six or seven minutes. So it's now cooked down. Uh, we have a little bit of a sizzle here, which is nice. You can hear that in the pot. I'm gonna turn the heat off, move it off the heat. Last thing is a little bit of lime juice. Obviously you wanna add that at the end so it's still bright. And now we'll build a taco. So I learned something about tortillas when I was in Puerto Vallarta not too long ago. If you're gonna use them for a taco, you want them to hold together, not fall apart, because obviously that <laughs> makes a huge mess. So uh, many commercial varieties of tortillas don't hold together well. They tend to dissolve on you, especially with this kind of filling. So you can get great tortillas online now, actually, and look for one that is actually gonna hold together. A blue corn tortilla, for example, tends to be a lot stronger. So uh, there's the tortilla. I'm not gonna fill it too much. Um, a little bit of avocado. And a little onion. And a little bit of lime. I'm 
we go. So that's our Dutch oven beef birria taco. Uh, we learned it at home in Mexico City. And the secret is using three different kinds of chilies, each of which have a very different flavor profile, toasting them in a skillet and making a chili base. And it has a great fresh flavor. So Dutch oven beef birria tacos. No, de hecho está súper rápido. Por eso quiero este. Today, we're gonna to make something hot, spicy, with a little bit of a twist. Today's recipe comes to you from Mexico City. This recipe was shown to us by Jorge Fritz and Beto Estua of Casa Jacaranda Cooking School in Mexico City. This is our Tomatillo Serrano Salsa. Super easy and very delicious. Let's begin. So for this recipe, I'm going to use tomatillos, which look like tomatoes, but they are not. This is what they look like raw, and they're available in most supermarkets. Mostly in the summer, you wanna look for bright green, unbruised tomatillos. And you're gonna take off the tops, this outer shell, and this is what you get inside. They have a citrusy floral flavor that's absolutely stunning and delicious. So, if you're not able to get fresh tomatillos, you can use canned tomatillos, you wanna make sure you drain them before you use them. We're gonna use fresh ones today. I'm gonna to chop them up roughly and add them to my blender. In these go. And next, the heat. I have three serrano chilies here. I'm going to stem them and seed them and then put them in. One thing to remember when you're dealing with chilies is that the inside part is very spicy. So just a little safety note for those of you who like to play with fire. All right, in with the chilies. Okay, next in goes onion. I have some white onion here, a little bit of salt. And that's it, three ingredients plus a little salt. I'm gonna blend this into a smooth paste. This is a salsa cruda, which means it is a raw, uncooked salsa. And that's it, I blended it for about a minute. Super easy. And into a bowl it goes. So here my salsa is ready. Three ingredients, a minute in the blender, super, super easy. This salsa is great with rice and beans, with tacos, and to cut the richness of any kind of meat or cheese dish, I'm gonna taste it today with some tortilla chips.
Oh yeah. <laughs> that is hot and spicy and very, very fresh and so, so different from your standard issue salsa. So here's our Tomatillo Serrano salsa. Serve it at your next party and you will definitely be the star of the party. Highly recommended. It's absolutely delicious. The Tortoria Nelly, we learned that a taco can just be a fresh tortilla sprinkled with salt. And at their window, you can smell the warm dough and pick up a kilogram for just 16 pesos. This small shop can make 7,500 tortillas per hour. Here, massive lumps of white masa get dumped into a 60-year-old machine that kneads the masa, then rolls it flat between stones before cutting out rounds. Aside from the ingredients you already have in your pantry, you're only six ingredients away from making ancho spiced pork and potato tacos. And I just told you what three of those ingredients were. It just goes to show you that you don't need that many ingredients to make a filling and flavorful meal. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I have some ancho chili powder and to that I'll be throwing in some cumin, along with some salt and of course some pepper. So we're not working with just any chili powder, we're working with ancho chili powder. Now, ancho chilies are dried poblanos, and they have a little bit more of this sweet, raisiny, chocolatey flavor compared to other peppers out there. Now, regular chili powder, there's all sorts of different chilies in there, not what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and stir up this spice mixture, and then we're going to divide it in half between our potatoes here, as well as our pork. Now, both of these ingredients are cut up into about half inch pieces. That way they cook nice and even. So, half goes into our potatoes and half into our pork. You don't have to be exact about this. Just make sure that everything's spiced. Excellent. We'll give it a stir. Bring back any rogue pieces of potato that fly out. We're just gonna get right into cooking these potatoes. I have a 12 inch nonstick skillet set over medium heat with a little bit of oil in it. And we're heating that oil until it shimmers. Once we get that shimmering going, we're gonna go ahead and throw these potatoes in. And give it a little toss just to get it into a nice even layer. And then we're gonna pop a lid on it. We're just gonna let those potatoes cook until they start to brown around the edges, or you could pierce one with a knife. So my potatoes are nice and brown. It's at this point that we could go ahead and throw in all that seasoned pork. Along with some thinly sliced garlic. And just like before, give this a little stir especially that garlic. We definitely want that seasoning everybody in the pan. Get it into one nice even layer, and then we're going to pop a lid on it. We're gonna let that cook for about six to eight minutes or until that pork is cooked all the way through and lightly golden on the outside. All right, our pork is thoroughly cooked, and as you can see, it has a nice bit of golden brown color to it. I say we're ready to eat. So, oh yeah, that's nice stuff. All right, let's build a taco, shall we? So, here we go. Now you could top off your taco with all sorts of different things. I'm gonna go for some fresh cilantro, some red onion, Pro tip, soak your red onion in cold water before you serve it raw. That way it gets rid of some of that extra bite. And some radishes. And finally, just a little touch of sour cream for me. And a nice squeeze of lime. 
this has got to be one of my favorite things to put out at parties because you put the filling out, you put a bunch of toppings out, and everyone gets to make their tacos exactly the way they like it. And that's all it takes. Like I said, you don't need that many ingredients to make a really flavorful, delicious meal. These Ancho Spice pork and potato tacos are perfect for a weeknight dinner. Mm. The spice really comes through. It's beautifully savory. And all those toppings just brighten it up and give it some crunch. You can get this recipe as well as all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. If you want a really great and quick education about tacos, the place to go is Los Angeles. What you've always said about LA is you can get into very personal, specific regional areas and find your food. This is like nothing I've seen before. It's really the taco that has everything. You're getting the true LA experience right now. We're five minutes away from LAX. This is a backyard restaurant. Como esta, Sergio? Sergio? Hola. Hola. I'm really excited for Chris to try the Sazón de Sinaloa. And this is as LA as it gets. Great. Let's go eat. We've just arrived at Manusaki's Winery. We've come here to find out about the history, the wine. This menu that we created is an imitation to our real home. This is how we would cook if you came to our house. Yeah, Le fettuccine all'Alfredo nascono nel lontano 1908, quando il mio bisnonno Alfredo di Lelio le preparò per sua moglie Ines. Benvenuto nella mia cucina. L'importante è la mantecatura, lo dirò fino alla morte. Mm. It's all about good ingredients and the labor of your hands. I feel like we're doing surgery. Scalpel. <laughs> In the neighborhoods of Fez, Morocco, there's a unique and fabulous approach to flatbread. It's called hubs, which is baked in a communal oven called a faran. <laughs> in Bari, Italy, they let the dough proof for hours. It rises, it collapses, and then rises up again. Sort of expands. Have you ever used to do magic tricks when you were a kid? <laughs> is that what's going to happen? I'm here in Istanbul. There's tons of people on the street, lots of food on the street. It's a very exciting place to be. My father brought me here and his father before him. So it's the culture and the heritage overall. There you go. Now I feel like I'm really <laughs> cooking. This really is so much more than the sum of its parts. We're going to search for the pies of Yalapa. Coconut pies, corn pies, chocolate pies. I explained to the people, this is the, the same pie from my mama for almost 44 years. You know, beach, pies, and Greek cooks. There is so much flavor, it's almost hard to believe. That has all the nostalgia in it that I could ever wish for. This is seriously one of my favorite things to cook for myself, for others, mostly for myself. It's a good time. Are you gonna okay. stop talking so I can eat I'm the carbon pie? Oh, right. I thought it added a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a big step up. When a dish is simple and it has complex flavors at the same time, that's the holy grail. All episodes and recipes from this season of Milk Street Television are available for free at our website, MilkStreetTV.com. Please access our content, including our step-by-step -step recipe videos, from your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer. The new Milk Street Cookbook is now available and includes every recipe from our TV show. From fried shrimp tacos and Thai-style vegetable stir-fry to Mexican chicken soup and Swedish cardamom buns, the Milk Street Cookbook offers bolder, fresher, simpler recipes. Order your copy of the Milk Street Cookbook for $27, 40% less than the cover price, and receive a Milk Street tote with your order at no additional charge. Call 855-MILK-177 or order online. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sautéed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures.